Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. On deck, we've got what should be a great matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. With that, let's get out to venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Standing by with the call, here are Brandon Godden and Gerald Davis. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the Detroit Lions. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. Do we get a peek at the former number two overall pick, Mitchell Trubisky? And while we always talk about quarterbacks and what their potential is, we always want to see how it translates. To me, the next big step for Mitchell Trubisky is simply experience. Just 13 starts in his college career at North Carolina. A rookie season behind him in 2017 where he wasn't a full-time starter. It's just going to be repetition, 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 and especially during games. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. today listen you got to feed them first but if you do you usually get a great product out on the field and when they play well the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards Second down, Trubisky, and nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. And now the Lions' defensive starters. Brandon, I remember when Glover Quinn came out of the University of New Mexico as a cornerback, transitioned to the safety position. His forte, intelligence, understanding other teams' offenses, where they try to attack, and puts himself in a great position to make plays against the ball. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Out of the gun, Trubisky. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, 
You see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. As Matthew Stafford brings out the Detroit Lions, let's talk about what they did in week two. Better than week one, but still a loss at San Francisco, Charles, 30 to 27. And still playing from way behind. They were down big before they mounted a comeback to make it close in San Francisco. Give Matthew Stafford credit. He put his four interception performance against the Jets on Monday night behind him, enough to throw three touchdown passes, but not enough to get Matt Patricia, their rookie head coach, his first victory. Yeah, now sitting at 0-2, heading into week three. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. This is the newest member of the Lion backfield, LeGarrette Blunt. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. And we look now at the Lions offense. One way I really judge a player's value is when opponents know what your strengths are, yet they still can't take that away. That tells me you're a heck of a player. For Theo Riddick, everyone knows about his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, yet he's still the primary target for Matthew Stafford on just about any passing situation. Here's Blunt. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Play fake here on first down. It's complete to Gordon Tate. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. So not much to speak of scoring-wise in this first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to Soldier Field after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Here with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, as the Lions are in possession of the football here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. for Blunt. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 12 more yards there and another first down. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 right at the 40. Set, now the Notre Dame man. This is Theo Riddick. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. A 
reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. Second down to Stanford. This is Riddick on the screen. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Third and long. It's Stanford. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third decline. down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. And you look at the numbers, not only has he not caught a pass, they haven't targeted him yet. And we're coming up toward halftime. And you remember our meeting with the coach beforehand? What did he tell us about him? I write his number on my play sheet, and I circle it in bold, bold type, because I want to make sure he gets the ball and often. Trubisky on first down into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker Jared Davis and they will set up shop with outstanding field position in the red zone at the 17 yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll run it now, out of the gun. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. second down and he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown in for the score and the Lions are in for six and that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point what a great way to end the half yeah great job to put themselves in front and now see on the sideline special teams defense scrambling saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter now Matt Prater for the point after. Extra point good by Prater. And it's now a 7-0 game. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. In plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, Pater.
Martin the putter now out to kick it away. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it to the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Looking deep for Gabriel. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes his quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. It's Trubisky. Throw left side taken in by Miller. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. Throwing the out route incomplete, it's Miller. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. They call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains. It felt like Mitchell Trubisky, the quarterback for the Bears, was in the draft room with his general manager because picking up this pass catcher from Memphis, Anthony Miller, made to order for a young quarterback. A nice slot who can make plays like we just saw. He is fun to watch. Went from being a walk-on at Memphis to completely rewriting the record books out wide. Looking to throw, Trubisky on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Miller. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. 
And Parkey's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into the half, put some points on the board. No matter what the score says at that point, you've accomplished what you set out to do. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome everyone to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far, and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well, as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Lions in the lead, and they're going to get the football first as well as the second half is underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, let's take a step away from this game for a second. Talk about teams that are undefeated through two weeks in the NFL season. Miami, Denver, Cincinnati, Tampa Bay. How about those surprises all being 2-0 right now? Yeah, we, you know, the Jaguars, the Chiefs, and the Rams are all 2-0. Not a major surprise. You're exactly right because they have one common characteristic, those teams you mentioned, Miami, Denver, Cincinnati, and Tampa. None of them made the playoffs last year. And what's the one thing we do know about the NFL? Roughly half the teams that made the playoffs a year before will not make them two years in a row. So these teams could be some of the early replacements in the playoff race for 2018. And one more stat, 62% of teams that start 2-0 make the playoffs. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. A shotgun snap for Stafford, and he dumps it off to Blum. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. But well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Chicago. Chicago. 
So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out if that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. Let's see if they can get the latter 50%. On first down, Trubisky. Now the hook up here to Allen Robinson. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Throw left side complete. That's Burton. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Trubisky finding the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. First down, they run with Howard. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. Caught out left side by Robinson. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now it's Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. Second down, here's Trubisky. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. 
They go play action with Trubisky. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Christian Jones able to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 20. Out of the gun, Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Bears have put an extra defender in the secondary on third down. Yep, they're in the nickel. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for Detroit. Taking it about the 16. 12 yards on the return that time, and the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. He'll look. 
up to throw. He gets it to Sims, complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Back to throw. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Nearly an interception. If that one's picked off, it's over. So a new lease on life, so to speak. A lot of times when you're in coverage, you're so focused on the man and the coverage that sometimes the ball, if it arrives, it surprises you. That may have happened to him in that situation. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Back to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Burton. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep down. This is caught inside the 15. And he's going to be marked down deep in Detroit territory. It's a big-time play there for the Bears. 47 yards. He's back to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. Remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Throwing now is Trubisky. He'll leave it for Cohen, complete. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now it's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive. The bottom line, they're a play away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And that is it. Complete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Lions looking like they're going to come away with a victory. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, hey you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. taken down at the 18. And now the Bears going to signal for another timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. And the Lions will take the knee here with victory in the cards. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Stafford down to a knee and with it, he's going to ensure his guys a victory. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from Soldier Field.